5. What must I do to be saved? One evening at Shunem, after John's apostles had returned to Hebron, and after Jesus' apostles had been sent out two and two, when the Master was engaged in teaching a group of twelve of the younger evangelists who were laboring under the direction of Jacob, together with the twelve women, Rachel asked Jesus this question, Master, what shall we answer when women ask us, What shall I do to be saved? When Jesus heard this question, he answered, When men and women ask, What shall we do to be saved? You shall answer, Believe this gospel of the kingdom, accept divine forgiveness. By faith recognize the indwelling Spirit of God, whose acceptance makes you a son of God. Have you not read in the scriptures where it says, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength? Also where the Father says, My righteousness is near, my salvation has gone forth, and my arms shall enfold my people. My soul shall be joyful in the love of my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, and has covered me with the robe of his righteousness. Have you not also read of the Father, that his name shall be called the Lord our righteousness? Take away the filthy rags of self-righteousness, and clothe my son with the robe of divine righteousness and eternal salvation. It is forever true, the just shall live by faith. Entrance into the Father's kingdom is wholly free, but progress, growth and grace, is essential to continuance therein. Salvation is the gift of the Father, and is revealed by His sons. Acceptance by faith on your part makes you a partaker of the divine nature, a son or a daughter of God. By faith you are justified, by faith you are saved, and by this same faith are you eternally advanced in the way of progressive and divine perfection. By faith was Abraham justified and made aware of salvation by the teachings of Melchizedek. All down through the ages has this same faith saved the sons of men. But now has a son come forth from the Father to make salvation more real and acceptable. When Jesus had left off speaking, there was great rejoicing among those who had heard these gracious words. And they all went on in the days that followed, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom with new power and with renewed energy and enthusiasm. And the women rejoiced all the more to know that they were included in these plans for the establishment of the kingdom on earth. In summing up his final statement, Jesus said, You cannot buy salvation. You cannot earn righteousness. Salvation is the gift of God, and righteousness is the natural fruit of the spirit-born life of sonship in the kingdom. You are not to be saved because you live a righteous life. Rather is it that you live a righteous life because you have already been saved, have recognized sonship as the gift of God, and service in the kingdom as the supreme delight of life on earth. When men believe this gospel, which is a revelation of the goodness of God, they will be led to voluntary repentance of all known sin. Realization of sonship is incompatible with the desire to sin. Kingdom believers hunger for righteousness and thirst for divine perfection.